So if I start with 14 foul, doesn't fit, doesn't fit, 12. <laughs> I bet he's not going to put this on the video. <laughs> So the other week we started up the Starler with the new Haltech ECU and that's when I noticed there was a problem with the camshafts. So the front engine's a fully built engine, it's a 5E, it's got the Arise pistons and the spool rods and we've got larger camshafts as well on the engine and then the rear has exactly the same combo. Now when we started up I noticed a problem that the rear sounds really lumpy. But the problem is the front when it starts up and idles, it sounds almost standard. And that's when the tuner picked up that, hey, we've got a lot of vacuum in the front here. Are you sure the camshafts are right? Or have you done the camshaft timing wrong? So we checked the camshaft timing, that was fine. And we removed the rocker cover. And that's when we put the verniers across the top of the camshaft and realized that the intake cam, for whatever reason, the base circle was wrong and the cam lobe across the top measured 40 millimeters, whereas the cam lobe across the exhaust here was 42. And then the cam lobe on both of the rear cams, both were 42. So that's what led us to believe that there was a problem with the camshafts. Um, I contacted um, the Thai camshafts down south, explained what happened, and they made up another cam for me and sent it up. And that's finally arrived now. So you can tell the difference here. So we've got a standard camshaft there and versus this one, the lobes on it are ginormous. So we're gonna be letting a lot more air in and there's a lot more duration there. So the valve's gonna be open for a lot longer. So it's time now, we'll pull the rock cover off and get the old cam out. as easy as just getting the new cam and bolting it in so there's a special clearance underneath here between this lobe oh, so that's the new one there. and the shim yeah there's a special clearance there yeah so pretty much i've got to pull the shims out yeah they just look like there's in batteries eh the shims yeah you can try and put them in your vibrator it won't work <laughs> so usually if you're trying to put a new cam in the standard ones will be anywhere between like two mil and two and a half. So you pretty much can get the new cam, fold it in, measure the clearances, work out your differences and that, but because these are already way oversized, I'm gonna start again. Put stock ones back in there, yeah. which I'll pick really thin ones. Yeah, and then go work out from there. So I've got a whole heap of old shims. I might just pick all the ones that are three millimeters. All right, so we've got cylinders one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, sorry, valves, one to eight. Intake, write down all of these values. There's an O2, 3.03, 3.02, 3. This is a starting point. What happens now, we've got to put all these in the head. The next part of this saga, all those ones that I've labelled and numbered there, they're in the car in that order. So now we get a new camshaft. Now I've got to bolt the caps down and then measure the clearance between the shim and that new cam. How do you measure the clearance? A little feeler gauge. All the cam caps are back on, need to tighten those up and then we can check the clearances underneath there. If we go and turn the engine over so we've got the exhaust cam lobe pointing straight up in the air, that means that we can go and check the clearance in between the lobe there and that shim. We need to do the same thing we're going along checking the other cylinders. So yeah, we'll check this one first and then we need to turn the lobe to the, to the point at the top so that way we can measure the clearance properly. So we've measured the first two valves, we've got 15th thou and 18th thou and then we'll go ahead now and do the rest of the cylinders and then we need to convert this to a metric number into millimetres. So we've got all our measurements here in inches. 
Need to go and convert all those to millimetres. All right, first one here, 15 thou. O point three eight one millimeter. Next one, eighteen. Add that to our original shims. And then subtract the difference, which is the ten thousand that we need. Yep. Remove all those shims, replace them with the ones we need, put the cam back in, and it should be should be pretty close. So we've got our starting shim size. We've got the clearance in between the cam lobe and the shim, converted that to a millimetres, added the shim size plus the clearance which gives us this and now we need to minus ten thousandths of an inch or 0.25 a millimetre and this is going to be the shim size that we need to put back in the car. So if we go 3.23 minus 0.25 the shim size we need for the first intake valve is 2.98. So in, at the moment we have 2.85 in the car, so we need to pull that out. And need to go through my little stash here, which I measured earlier. So we've got our chart all worked out. We've got everything here. If you're confused, just go back to the start of the video and start again and you will understand it. Um, so I do have a lot of second end shims here. But the problem is I need one here that's 3.28. Um, there's a couple here, so 3.12, there's a 3.10. I'm just going to order a whole other set of shims. So the shim company I use is precisionshims.com.au and you literally go through the files. Um, these are a 25 millimeter wide shim. We're in the flat shim area, 24, 25 mil flat shims. And then we select the shim size. So on a little list here, we need a 2.98. So we go through here. 2.98, do we need any more than one? We need two of those. So you select your quantity and just go add to basket. There's the problem shim that I didn't have, the 3.28. Again, we just go through 25 mil flat shims, 3.28. One of those, add to basket. And then you simply just select your thickness and how many you want. All of those, get them in an airbag, get them coming up. Um, they'll turn up looking like this, where they have a, where they have a number on there, 3.92, and yeah, these ones will come like 297, 312, and when those arrive, we can put them straight in the car, measure the clearances again. If the calculations are done right, so there's a shim size plus the clearance minus that. All these are 0.25, which is 10 thou. So that's that's the clearance that we need. So our new shims have arrived in the mail. Now on here, all the shims have got numbers on them. So what have we got here? We're missing 3.28. Oh, there we go. So we just label that. Yeah. We've got 2.99. We want 2.98. Get 2.98. 3.14 3.14 well we got 2.96 that'll do 3.0 we already got that one 3.12 yep 2.97 but we have 2.96 that's okay 3.28 3.28 2.98, 2.96. So we need a 2.98. Oh, there we go. And that's it, sorted. Got everything there. Pretty much now we're just going to fit these up in the engine, recheck the clearances again, then we should be good to start up. So we removed the cam, so all we have to do now is one by one. Uh, we have cylinder one here, remove one shim, replace it with that, replace the second one and so on till we have all the new shim sizes in here and then we can refit the cam and then check all the clearances again. Now I like to put these shim numbers down that way when we have the cam spinning around flat out it doesn't wear the numbers off so if you ever have to pull the cam out again you'll know what size is in there. So the new cam and the new shims are in. I did forget to mention you should use a um, an engine assembly lube just on all the moving parts before you fit the camshaft that way you're not going to have metal on metal when you first start it up. 
So we've done these bolts up to around about 19 newton meters. Before we turn the engine over by hand, don't forget to remove that bolt because it will hit on the cylinder head. Once that's out, we can um, get the feeler gauges now and check the rest of the clearances. You probably can't see that too well, but that says 11. It's 11 thou. So if we get this feeler gauge now and try and put it underneath the cam, she's not going to fit. Same as this one. So what we're going to do now is we go across and we're going to our 10 thou, which is what we we're trying to set it up to. We go 10 thou. Here we go. Moment of truth. A little bit of clearance there, it's good. Cool, so do the same thing. Go ahead, turn the engine over till you get these lobes pointing up the top. And we want to get the 10th hour feeler gauge and pop them underneath. If they're all, you know, give or take 1th hour. So if you get nine or 11, that'll be fine. Um, then you'll be free to start it up and should be good to go. Now that we've done the intake side, the exhaust side's pretty much the same, except we want a bit more clearance. Um, because it's the exhaust, there's a lot more heat on this side. So instead of the intake being 10 thou, we want to do the same procedure, but make all these 12 thou. Now everyone's going to have their own different opinions on what the clearances should be, but this is what came with the cam specs and what they recommend to set it up as. Now the last thing before we fire this up is I like to put a little bit of silicon in the edges inside here. So that way it, uh, when we put the rocker cover gasket back on it, it helps it all seal up and reduces the chances of it leaking. All right, here we go. First start up with the big cams and new shims. I don't know how to stop it. Where's the what one? Where the fuck's the red button? <laughs>